going to walk you through the steps how to do a beam analysis for a simple beam. And so our simple beam means that we have a pinned connection and a roller connection. Um, and for this one, we're just going to do one concentrated load. And so we have a concentrated load right at this point in the very center of the beam that is 500 pounds. You can see that our beam is 16 feet long. Um, again with that load of 8 feet in the center. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw the free body diagram for this beam. And so I'm going to start out by just sketching a free body diagram. So I'll draw my line. Here's my beam. I'll go ahead and uh, put the reaction force here. Reaction force here. our load on the beam and I'll go ahead and say that the load is equal to 500 pounds add some dimensions to it it's 8 feet to the center beam is actually 16 feet long. Label our points now. Here I'm just going to, because we have no x direction variables, all of our forces are in the y direction, so this force is in the y. We have nothing in the x direction, the horizontal. I'll go ahead and label this point reaction point, reaction force A and over here is reaction B. Okay, and so once we have that taken care of, our free body diagram drawn, we can go ahead and uh, work through the calculations here. And so the first step um, is to sum the forces in the y direction. And so the sum of our forces in the y direction have to equal zero. The reason that the forces have to equal zero is the beam needs to be in stat has to be in static equilibrium for it to be able to withstand and, and and not move. And so all of our forces have to be equal to zero. So it, um, it needs to be in static equilibrium. And so what we'll do now is we will just add up those forces in the y direction. And so here. We have a force, a vector going up in the y direction. It's RA. So I'll put RA plus our other force in the y direction. We have RB. We have one more force in the y direction. And notice that in vectors, uh, direction matters. And because our load is in the y direction and it's going down, it's pointing down, it's going to be negative 500. And so I'll put minus 500 pounds. All of that has to be equal to zero. All right. I can go ahead and uh, um, rearrange the equation. So I'll have RA plus the reaction force at B is equal to 500. So we'll just add that 500 to the other side of the equation. All right. And so we still have two unknown variables, so we cannot um, move forward with that equation. So we need to use another one. Um, not only do the forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero, but the, the sum of the forces or the sum of the moment forces have to be equal to zero. So remember, moments are the turning or twisting force. So I'll go ahead and uh, 
sum the moments sum of the moments and we're going to do it from point A so the moment forces from point A have to equal zero okay and so our first moment force from point A is RB it's going up and it's 16 feet and so we're going to say a moment is a force times a distance. Again, our force is RB. We don't know it. It's undefined. And our distance is 16 feet. And so I'll say RB times 16 feet. The next force I have run into is this 500 pounds. And so I'll say minus that 500 pounds. times 8 feet because it's 8 feet from point A the last moment I have is RA it's going up but it's 0 feet and so I'll just put RA times 0 all of that has to be and I ran over my page a little bit equal to zero. All right. So I'll go ahead and do some calculating on this. So I'll um, reduce this. RB times 16 feet. 500 times 8 equals negative 4,000. Foot pounds. And then RA times zero is just zero, and so I'll leave it at that. All of that equals zero. Simplify more. RB times 16 feet. Add 4,000 to the other side equals 4,000 foot pounds. Now I'll divide 16 feet. RB equals 4,000 foot pounds divided by 16 feet. And I get the reaction force. RB is equal to 250 pounds. So I'll go ahead and circle that. Now I can come up here back to my other equation and I can substitute in RB. So I'll have RA plus 250 is equal to 500 which would make RA equal to 250 pounds. So what we're saying is that the reaction, because this is in the middle, we're going to have 250 pounds of force in the opposite direction on either side of our beam. Okay. Now we can go ahead and sketch our shear and moment diagrams for uh, this uh, beam, and so I'll do that down here. I'm going to start um, right here with a dot, and I'll put a dot on the other side. And so what's happening in this beam is that force is going over. So it gets to the center point. And then we have that pressure, that force of 500 pounds. And so this point right here is going to be 250 pounds. And then it's going to go down. I'll go ahead and put a line here to represent zero. Okay. 
goes down 250 to the other side So this is negative 250 pounds on that side. And I go ahead and hatch in the positive side. And so there's our shear diagram. Go ahead now and sketch our moment diagram. And so I'll come down to this point right here. This is zero. Our moment's going to go straight up until it gets to this point where that load is. And then it's going to come straight down on the other side to that point. And so there's our moment diagram. We know that um, the moment force, the maximum moment force is what we're trying to do here. And so the area um, under the shear diagram left of the center is what we're focusing on. And that's how you always do a moment diagram from the force to the left um, is 250 pounds times eight feet. That's the moment. And so our moment max, maximum moment, is equal to the area under the shear diagram to left of center. So the area under the shear diagram to the left of center, that's the maximum moment. And so that is going to be equal to our 250 pounds that we have multiplied by the 8 feet we have and so we get a moment max equal to 2000 foot pounds So this point right here is 2,000 foot-pounds. So we can go ahead and label this moment max, and it is 2,000 foot-pounds. This again is our shear diagram. This is our moment diagram. And so what we've done is graphically represent uh, the shear force and the moment force for our beam.